we're going to look at insects in a totally different manner. There is an upcoming event at the Morris Arboretum of the University of Pennsylvania, which piqued my interest rather than a pub crawl. They're calling this a bug crawl. And they are going to be eating bugs, gourmet bugs, we are led to believe, um, if such a thing is indeed possible, uh, on July 17th, on the evening of July 17th, uh, billed as an evening of adventurous eating. And here to talk with us about the fun and frivolity of cooking insects is Chef Josh Hunter of Companies Coming Catering who has been providing the catering at the Morris Arboretum for, I believe, a decade now, right, Josh? Yes, sir. Good for you. Is this your first adventure into bug eating? Yes, it is. Now, in your culinary training, did you ever come across anyone who discussed this? Because this is not uncommon. There are, like, societies of strange people who get together and have bug dinners and things like this. You know, it was discussed a little bit. Bugs as ingredients in food. In culinary school, we talked about the Casa Marzu cheese from Sicily, where it has maggots in it. But, you know, generally they're sort of— We just lost half the audience there, Josh. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't chase them away until—and people like this cheese. Oh, it's a delicacy. It's a delicacy. I I guess if you call it a delicacy, it can be anything. Because I would have imagined in culinary school, they would have told you to avoid insects in the kitchen. At all costs, usually, yes. Uh, What did you do to prepare for this event? Well, I read a few books, and uh, we've done some experimental cooking at the restaurant. Looked over menus that we found online and in cookbooks, and uh, I think we've come up with a pretty solid sampling of bugs that people won't find too, too offensive, and hopefully they're able to eat at our event. Now, is this an American problem, the concept of eating this enormous abundance of protein just because it has six legs? Because certainly there there are paleontologists who believe we developed our big brains largely by eating protein sources like bugs, and there's still societies where I believe ants are eaten, and especially locusts, correct? Oh, Uh, Absolutely. Grasshoppers yeah. and locusts, which are the same kind of creature, which is kind of interesting because in these communities, the grasshoppers and locusts are devouring the crops, so it, it only seems fair play. <laughs> Turnabout, yeah. There's uh, cultures in Mexico that eat jamiles, which are little bugs that they sell on roadside stands that taste like tutti fruity candy, apparently. And um, I think mainly developed countries tend to stray away from eating bugs when there is much more handsome forms of protein. But um, as, you know, our environmental resources dwindle, uh, this is a responsible way to get protein in your diet. Now, when you were researching this, did you find the same insects over and over again in recipes? Uh, A lot of grasshopper recipes, a lot of crickets, uh, mealyworms. I had to really dig deep because the people at the Arboretum had asked me to come up with five different stations. Ooh, that's tough. So, yeah, I mean, we could have done chocolate-covered crickets and called it a day. But, uh, no. um, Will you be serving chocolate-covered crickets? No, we will not. Yeah, we're trying to keep this a little more sophisticated for the evening, so. And where where, where are you getting your raw ingredients? I I was was in Whole Foods today, and I couldn't find the insect (laughs) section. (laughs) They're actually going to be coming live to us from an organic insect farm called Fluker Farms down south. I've heard of them. Do they perhaps provide crickets for people who have pet frogs and toads and other creatures that that need to eat live crickets? Mm -hmm. But uh, they've started feeding them on a diet that's completely organic so that it's safe for human consumption. All right, I see our producer, Alexis Landis, outside the studio. You have brought a tray of what I believe is cricket fritters and some sauces and stuff. And thank you, Alexis. Lovely presentation here. Um, These look like chicken McNuggets. And what do you suggest? That I dip it into the sauce and then squeeze lime or what? Yeah, you know, a little bit of lime and some of the coconut sauce on there. Let me try just with the coconut sauce. I apologize moving off off mic here. We're, we're eating on air. It doesn't look like bugs. It looks like a little meatball, a little fritter thing. I'm just going all in. I hate to say this, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to say this to our 
to our chef here. But this is delicious. Oh, thank you. Mm. Here's our intern, Jolie. Oh, no. Jolie, just uh, here. And see, they look. Go ahead and dip it in the dipping sauce. No, can I try the lime? You can try the lime, sure. What well, You know. Oh. It's, a, it's a wild day here at the You Bet Your Garden uh, studio. Now, Josh, what else are you going to be serving while we're eating cricket here? Yeah. These crickets are going to be gone, man. <laughs> we're going to be serving the cricket fritters with the coconut curry dipping sauce, um, mealworm french fries with smoked sea salt and spicy tomato ketchup. And that's one of the most common things that people eat at these insect events, right? Are the mealyworms. Yeah. 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 So they'll sort of be sprinkled on amongst the salt. So, right. Um, then, uh, you know, for the more bold guest, we're going to have a grill-your-own giant hissing teriyaki-glazed cockroach station. Okay, I'm off. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally out. That one we're not going to order so many cockroaches have you, for. And have you tested some cockroaches? I had one, yeah, yeah? last week in How'd preparation for this. How'd uh, it go? It's a unique flavor. <laughs> And then there's uh, bamboo worm bruschetta and silkworm pupae summer rolls, mm -hmm. and they're going to go on a cucumber crescent. So, And adult beverages will be involved. Yes, we're going to have beer and wine paired with each of the dishes at all the stations. So are, are these beers and wines named after insects, or you just decided this is, for instance, you're, you're saying what I'm eating here that I said look like a chicken McNugget that is a uh, cricket fritter. Yes. You know in many cultures, is referred to, like, as a shrimp substitute. Right. So are you going to serve, like, a, a beer or wine you would have with shrimp? Um, if I was to serve a beer with that, I would think maybe, like, a Belgian Golden Strong Ale or a Triple, something, you know. I'm thinking a Qingdao. Yeah, with some acid to it. Absolutely. So this is upcoming at the Morris Arboretum on July 17th in the evening, 6 o'clock, and it's in conjunction with their exhibit, which they've been running for a couple of years now, spectacularly popular. And we love it because it gives us a, a great image to put on our website in the events section. And that's the Big Bugs. Right. Where they have these 12 and 14 foot sculptures of like ants and praying manti and everything. Right. Yeah, they're all made out of natural and found materials. So they're very beautiful too, by the way. So were you able to... Adapt pre-existing sauces? Was that the easiest part? For the most part, the way we looked at these menu items, we took uh, the insect ingredients and tasted them in their natural state to see what they were most similar to and then sort of folded them into recipes that were pre-existing. You didn't eat any live bugs, did you? No. I, I mean, just blanched or, or okay. roasted, yeah. Okay. Without so, un, unadulterated bugs, we'll put right. it that way. Sure. Unspiced, yeah. unseasoned. You know. Absolutely. But cooked. Cooked. Yes. You didn't eat no raw bugs. No, just... no. I don't recommend eating raw bugs. But there are people who do, right? Oh, absolutely. At these things, right? Sure. What was your reaction when they first came to you? Did you try to run away and hide? Did you fake a seizure? Did you go, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll do my best? Um, I was a little hesitant at first because you know, as a caterer, you don't want to get pigeonholed into a certain type of cuisine. But... Um, you know, I enjoy all the challenges they throw at me, and I just looked at this as another, you know, thing to try out and succeed at. So now that you have, and and I'm a picky eater. I'm a fussy eater. I am not really an adventurous eater. I'm I'm a, I'm very proud of myself, actually. Uh, you know, the the only reason I'm not finishing this list last fritters, I think it's probably chilled down the warmth. Oh, just the mouthfeel of these things, uh, uh, really exceptional. I would order this now in a restaurant. Oh wow, thank you. You said you went online and got the recipes and stuff, and I presume the bugs themselves were not hard to find once you found that supplier. Right? Can this be done at home? Oh, absolutely. This recipe for cricket fritters can be found in the last issue of the Weaver's Way uh, newspaper. Oh, Weaver's Way is a, a long-time co-op in the Philadelphia area. Yes, absolutely. And so you get your crickets, you prepare them, which we'll dance around right now, and then you batter them up. Are, were they deep fried? Yes, they were. Okay, so everything tastes better deep fried. Absolutely. And, but then, I mean... Where most people are going to fall down, and this seems almost superfluous, is the sauce. Right, and the sauce is very simple. It's uh, an apricot curry dipping sauce. Um, we use a little bit of 
apricot preserves, some coconut milk, uh, hot madras curry powder, and a pinch of garam masala, and it's, that's about it. Well, I am pleasantly surprised. I can now say that I ate a cricket um, to be a good sport, and then I ate like five more because they were absolutely delicious. How many crickets per fritter? Uh, well, let's see. For that batch that we did there, and I think there was about a dozen of them, um, there were three dozen crickets. Okay. Chef Josh Hunter of Companies Coming Catering will be serving all sorts of tasty insect hors d'oeuvres at the Morris Arboretum at the University of Pennsylvania, which is located in Chestnut Hill, on July 17th in an evening of adventurous eating called The Bug Crawl.